Hello everyone and welcome back to our building series. In this episode we're going to carry on and add the rest of our placing and spending of ingredients because at the moment we can just click on standard block and just build as many as we like regardless of how many items we have in our inventory. So we need to fix that and what we're going to do is create a function inside our inventory component to do a query on our map. So let's go into our inventory component that we've made previously and we're going to create a new function. And this new function we're going to call query ingredients. And it's quite a simple one. It's just going to look for and see if we have uh, the correct number of ingredients that we need. So the ingredients we need to know is going to be a map. And that will come, be very similar to what we've done here for the remove ingredients. So we need a, uh, a name and integer map. So do exactly the same here. Let's be uh, name. And that be name, turn it to a map, and make that integer. And this would be, not name, not called name, sorry. This would be called um, ingredients. Okay. So what it's going to do, it's going to check if we have all these ingredients. So to do that, we need to get our ingredients out here, get the keys. And for each key in our ingredient list, we're going to come out of here and do a for each loop. And as we go through this for each loop, we're going to check whether or not the array element and the array index, uh, sorry, the array element matches our inventory map and has the correct number we need on it. So we're going to drag inventory map out, choose get, and from here we're going to do a find. Now, find outputs not just a number, but also a boolean. So if it doesn't find it, this will output false, which is going to be very useful for what we're about to do. First of all, let's just put in the input. So find, we're going to drag from our array element, because we're searching for the name of a particular ingredient. In that ingredient it, uh, being searched for in our inventory map, it's going to output true or false for a boolean. So let's put that in as a branch. And if it's true, we need to then compare it with our uh, value here. So let's grab our ingredient parameter here by just right clicking and searching for ingredients. And you'll see get ingredients. And then from there, we can find the value here as well. So I'm just going to position this over here. And the array element is going to be plugged into that as well. And this is going to then compare that to that. So if the quantity we have here is greater than or equal to the quantity that we need, this is going to also output a true or false statement. So we need to make sure that this is true and this is true. So let's do an and note. And plug in both those conditions in and then putting it into the branch. Combining the two into one condition. Because both of them need to be true in order for this to output as true. If it doesn't, then it outputs false if either of these fail. So if it's true, we're going to store this as being correct. Now the way we do that, because it's on a for each loop, we need to do it for every single ingredient. We're going to do a local variable. So I'm going to put in here a lock underscore um, have ingredients. And by default, this would be true. We're going to drag that into true here. Oh, sorry, drag that into false rather. And leave it as unticked. Because what we're going to do is it's going to be true. And if it turns out that we don't have the item or we don't have enough of the item, it's going to output and change the lock have ingredients to false. Otherwise, it's true will just carry on and it'd be okay. On the completed, we're then going to output this boolean. So let's put a return node in there. Plug that into completed. And then I'm going to drag my boolean out. Dropping it into my return node. And I'm going to call it have ingredients. Hit compile. So now we've got this function here. We need to call this and work on this in our player character. So then when we place an item, like so, before we do that, we have to check whether or not we have the ingredients to place one. So I'm going to move this along 
And then from my inventory component, I'll drag that out. I'm going to search for my query ingredients function. Inserting it in between the get here and the placed. We're going to use the block recipe again. So I'll move that back over here. And that'll plug in as the ingredients there. Because that's the, what the block requires. So it's going to query it. And then it's going to output true or false via this boolean. So as it is boolean, we'll put that into a branch. And if it's true, carry on as normal. If it's false though, we're going to basically tell it to clear whatever it's holding for now. Okay. So I'm going to do uh, set build piece. To nothing and I'm going to set my current build piece to nothing and I'm going to change my is building here set to false compile and let's see if that's enough So I've got four, I need five wood to build a standard block and I have eight wood. So I should only be allowed to build one block. Okay, so I can only build one block. So we've still got to get rid of this one, this thing here, but I still built one block. Okay, so once we build a block, not only are we checking it at the start, we also need to check at the end as well. So back onto my player characters, Thing here and at the end we're going to drag this out and do another query so I'm just going to copy and paste this stuff making sure we plug in our target for the block recipe from the build piece we have here uh, in fact let's put that in between the end here okay because then I can use my build piece as the target okay again this is output a true or false statement so let's put a branch in and if it's true carry on as normal Otherwise, if it's false, we're going to be doing this stuff again. So I can just copy and paste that over here. Hit compile. And let's test this out. So again, I should only be able to build one block. There you go. I can't build anymore. I have to go back to the menu. I can't click on these buttons either. And it just flats out, stops me from spending any more wood. Okay. So let's start off with more wood and more metal. So I'm going to click on my player character. Uh, maybe not click on it, but go in here. And set the class defaults here. And we'll see. Uh, maybe an inventory component. There you go. On inventory, we'll give ourselves 18 wood. Click compile. And then push play. Okay, so I could build one block here. And I can keep building more blocks, or I can go back to my steel block and play steel blocks in. But because the steel blocks are more expensive, I've lost more of my inventory. So you want to make a duplicate of your test block, so you can make a steel block in this case, so a sibling block. And when you open it up, you want to change its settings to match those that you have inside of your data table. So that includes the name and the recipe that you have in mind for it so here i'm putting in wood and also metal don't forget to name name the block correctly as well the next thing you need to do is make sure your data table is using the correct actor and then it will work with a new block you can see here my inventory has dropped now for both wood and metal. And that's it. 
we've now got our query in there. It now won't let us place any more blocks after we've spent all our ingredients. And we're pretty much there. In the next part, we're going to start looking at how you can make these multiple blocks interact with each other, sending power to one another and getting them operating. If you want to watch that next part right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daly. A donation of just $1 will get access to that file, plus many, many other videos. You can also get access to project files, polls, uh, and exclusive content only on Patreon. Big thank you to all my Patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel and you're watching this video right now, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the future content. And if you have any questions you want to ask, leave a comment below and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.